Hey guys, welcome to another video. In today's video, I thought we could take a deep dive into the crafting system in Diablo 4 and have a look at what's new, what's old, and the potential things that maybe don't belong in Diablo. There is some very interesting stuff here to unpack, so let's get into it. So the way it appears crafting will work in Diablo 4 will be with an artisan system. Similar to how it was in Diablo 3, but at the same time, completely different. Now I know, that sounds confusing, but basically what I mean is, in every capital city you will find the artisans. And there are four as of right now. The blacksmith, the jeweler, the alchemist, and the occultist. And you can, while in the city, interact with them in order to craft. Simple, right? And what would you expect? So, let's have a look at each of them and see what sort of things you will be able to craft and do with them. So first, the blacksmith. This artisan is very similar to what we currently have in Diablo 3. The only difference here really is that they have given it a few more functions, which may be interesting to play with when the game goes live. There is very limited information available anywhere about this guy. He wasn't available in the beta test, and they haven't touched on it much in dev updates. But we do have some information to work with, so let's have a look at that. You unlock the blacksmith very early in your journey in Diablo 4. When your character reaches level 10, you receive a priority quest objective. This is to go and see Zivik, the blacksmith in Kyoshevad. You're given the task of upgrading a piece of gear, and in return, you're awarded experience. But really, this isn't the real reward. The real reward is that you're introduced to this NPC, which you will probably be spending most of your time with as you progress through the world of Sanctuary. You see, upgrading your gear and salvaging extra loot for materials will be the key to your core progression loop. So basically, the blacksmith artisan will have the ability to craft armor and weapons. They don't show us any recipes yet, but they have said very briefly that it will be able to make a range of weapons and armor including some very limited set items. This will of course be done in exchange for materials. So, overall very much looks like the crafting of weapons and armor we have in Diablo 3. And new to Diablo 4, he will also be able to upgrade your weapons and armor. When you access this artisan, you will be given the option to upgrade your weapons and armor in exchange for crafting materials as well as gold. When you upgrade an item, it will increase the affixes, which will also include the base armor and weapon damage. And you will also be able to upgrade items multiple times, further increasing them. The number of times you can actually upgrade will be based on the rarity of the item. The exact numbers on how many upgrades you can apply are not yet available, but be aware the total number per item will be capped. This is especially useful in Diablo 4 because they have designed the game in such a way as to have your class skill scale based on your weapon damage. So when you're upgrading your weapon, increasing your damage, you are also increasing the power of your chosen skills. See the list on screen for each upgrade material and what it's used for. And much like in Diablo 3, this blacksmith will also be your place to go to salvage unwanted gear for crafting materials. A few small but cool things to be aware of with this salvaging system are any socketed gems will be returned to you. If you upgrade a piece of gear and salvage it later, it will also return some of the materials used for upgrading the item. And the best small little feature I love is when you salvage a piece of gear, the transmog is saved to your wardrobe. So no worries about salvaging that helm that looked awesome in case you wanted to use it for your transmog. Another great quality of life feature the blacksmith has in Diablo 4 over 3 is the ability for you to mark stuff in your inventory as junk while you're out in the field. This then allows you to click the blacksmith when in town and have it all auto salvaged. Although, if you don't want to bother with this, you can still salvage all rares and magic items and so on exactly like you could in Diablo 3 with one click of a button. You can get an idea of what you will receive from salvaging from the chart on screen now. And finally, the blacksmith will be where you want to go when it's time to repair your gear. When you die in Diablo 4, your gear will lose 10% durability. So, you will want to have it repaired often, because the higher the amount of durability that it is missing, the higher the cost it will be to repair. And the next artisan we'll be looking at is the jeweler. Once again, the jeweler will be very much like the jeweler we have in Diablo 3, with a couple of new features available to it. In order to unlock your jeweler, you will first have to reach level 20 at which time you will receive a priority quest objective to go see the jeweler in Kyoshevad. Then you are given the task of upgrading a crude ruby into a chipped ruby. And the nice thing here is you're given the three crude rubies and then all you will need is a small amount of gold to craft your first gem. Much like in Diablo 3, the jeweler in Diablo 4 will be able to craft jewelry items, amulets and rings and stuff you would expect. This will be done using materials you will gather throughout Sanctuary. And just like the armorer, the jeweler will also be able to upgrade jewelry for you. Again, using materials you will gather. We don't know yet how many upgrades will be available per quality tier of jewelry, but we do know that it will be capped at the number and the number will vary per quality. When you upgrade a piece of jewelry, you will increase the potency of the affixes as well as increase the amount of resistances it provides. You can see the upgrade cost to upgrade your jewelry on screen now. The Diablo 4 jeweler will once again be your go-to for upgrading gems, socketing and unsocketing them as well, just as it was in Diablo 3. 
However, in Diablo 4 the gems have different benefits than we may be accustomed to, so let's briefly have a look. The Amethyst, when socketed in a weapon, will provide damage over time. When socketed in armor, it'll provide damage over time reduction. And when socketed in jewelry, will provide shadow resistance. The Diamond, when socketed in a weapon, will add a percentage to your ultimate damage. When socketed in armor, will provide a barrier potency. And when socketed in jewelry, will provide resistance to all elements. The Emerald, when socketed in a weapon, will provide increased percent damage to elites. In armor, it'll provide thorns, and in jewelry, it'll provide poison resistance. The ruby, when socketed in a weapon, will provide a percentage to resource generation. In armor, a percentage to life, and in jewelry, a percentage to fire resistance. A sapphire, when socketed in a weapon, will provide a percentage to critical strike damage to crowd-controlled enemies. In armor, damage reduction while fortified, and in jewelry, a percent to cold resistance. The Skull, a new addition to the gem series, when socketed in a weapon will provide life on kill. When socketed in armor, it'll provide healing received. And when socketed in jewelry, it'll provide plus armor. And the Topaz, when socketed in a weapon will provide lucky hit chance. When socketed in armor, it'll provide damage reduction while crowd control impaired. And in jewelry, percent lightning resistance. These percentages are all based on the quality of the gem that you socket into the item, of course. And finally, the jeweler in Diablo 4 will be where you will go if you want to add a socket to an item that currently doesn't have one. To do this, you will bring your item plus a scattered prism to the jeweler. It will only require one scattered prism to add a socket to your item. You will be farming these scattered prisms from world bosses throughout Sanctuary. And next up, we have the Alchemist. The Alchemist is a new addition to the Diablo franchise coming in Diablo 4. This artisan will be how Diablo 4 will be handling your potions and upgrading them. So instead of having them drop like in Diablo 3 or be on a vendor like in Diablo 2, what you will be doing in Diablo 4 is a little different. You will have a health potion on your action bar, and when you first start out, it'll be a very basic weak potion. Then as you level gathering materials, you will want to visit the alchemist to upgrade it. And to be clear, these are upgrades to your potion, not potions themselves. So you will only have to craft this once per character to permanently upgrade the potion per tier. To unlock your alchemist is much the same as the blacksmith. When you reach level 10, you will receive a priority quest objective to go see the alchemist in Kyoshivad. Then you will be given the task of upgrading your base weak healing vial to a tiny healing vial at the extremely low cost of 8 Gallovine, at which time your healing vial will increase in its efficiency. Then, after you complete this, you will be able to see the level progression and materials required to further upgrade your healing potion. Next, and also quite unique to the Diablo franchise, we have elixirs. The alchemist will craft these for you if you bring the appropriate materials, although unlike health potions, these are an item that is gone when consumed. So, you will be crafting many of these. It is also important to note that you can't stack elixirs. Sorry about that. You can only have one active at any one given time. We will also be able to craft incense, although this wasn't in the game during the media tests. They do say it will be in at launch, and they will work exactly like elixirs, providing you with various benefit effects. And the final function of the alchemist is as a refiner of plant-based resources, converting the raw plants you gather to usable materials to make elixirs, or to be used to upgrade your health potions and so on. And finally, we have the occultist. This new artisan is not entirely new at all. What they've basically done here is taken your Mystic from Diablo 3 and your Cube from Diablo 3 and mashed them into one artisan NPC. The first main role the Occultist will play for you is the extraction and application of legendary affixes. There are basically two ways you can do this. First, using your Codex of Power, which is, of course, your collection of legendary aspects that you have unlocked by completing certain dungeons for the first time. These are always going to be the minimum basic version of any aspect, but can work quite well while farming to get a better version. Next is by finding a legendary and extracting the legendary aspect into a vessel. This will destroy the original legendary in the process, but give you an item that you can then use to apply that legendary aspect to a new item. This is how you will get the higher quality and more powerful versions of the legendary aspects for your gear. Legendary aspects can also be stored in this way and used at a later time. These legendary aspects can be applied to another legendary item, overriding its existing legendary affix, or be placed on a rare item, upgrading it into legendary in the process. However, they cannot be used on uniques. And another important function of the occultist is to craft nightmare sigils. Nightmare sigils are a sort of very fancy greater rift stone from Diablo 3. What these do is give you the ability to transform regular dungeons into nightmare dungeons. These are not only more powerful versions though, each sigil will correspond to a certain dungeon. Engraved into these sigils will be the dungeon afflictions, which of course customize the dungeons. The difficulty tiers and also determine the rarity of certain drops. 
These may come in quite handy, especially if your character is geared in a way to be very effective against certain monsters or elemental types. This will give you some measure of control, and you will know what to expect going into a nightmare dungeon. When you craft or receive unwanted nightmare sigils, however, the occultists can also salvage them for you, which will give you back some of the base materials that are used in their making. And finally, the occultist will offer the enchanting service, exactly like we had in Diablo 3. You will be able to spend your resources and reroll an affix on an item to a new one. And just like before, with each roll it will become more expensive in both gold and materials. So that's what we know so far about the crafters that will be available at launch. And everything looks pretty good, but it's this next part that I am not so sure about. So, in Diablo 3, we saw the real shift in the franchise to crafting. Well, better put, the attempt to do so. You would gather materials from drops from rare monsters, keys from salvaging, various sources that you would naturally generate while playing. It wasn't really a bad system, it just lacked in that generally most drops always greatly outpace most crafted items, aside from a few outlier sets like Augild. But they've doubled down on this in Diablo 4. So again, there will be rare materials you gather by killing monsters and bosses and by taking part in events, but they have added something new, and it's something some of you may be excited about and some not. My feeling on it is simple. Does this really have a place in Diablo? And what I am talking about is the gathering, specifically herbalism and mining. These have been added to the mix this time around. So, you will encounter nodes as you travel through the zones. Plants, mining nodes, you get the idea. Now, normally if I was playing a game like Lost Ark, this wouldn't be an issue, because I expect it from the play experience. It's an MMO. But, as I have grown accustomed to fast-paced killing fields of Diablo, I find it incredibly difficult to imagine myself stopping as I am clearing to mine or pick flowers. Maybe it won't seem so out of place when I'm actually doing it, but it definitely seems strange when I think about it. What do you guys think? Do you like the addition of manual gathering to the Diablo franchise, or is it just too much like Lost Ark vibes? Let me know in the comments. And as always guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.